this is episode one. Episode one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what on earth are we doing, Nicola? Officially recording a podcast. Yes. That we said we were going to do for a long time. We did, yes, and for the longest time. We're finally here. Finally here, finally starting it. So what we're going to talk about? Um, <laughs> diving. Diving. Lots of diving. Bit of products. Oh, right, yeah. Um, I think it's probably customary, as it's the first episode, to introduce ourselves a little bit. Yeah, because there will be people who don't know. Who well, well hope, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully there'll be people who don't know. Yeah, we had no well, Hopefully it's not just our parents watching this. Well, yeah. Hopefully there are some... New, new listeners, new watchers. Yes, that's the idea. Well, go there, you see so? Uh, so my name's Jim. <laughs> Did you forget your name? <laughs> <laughs> Did you forget your name? No, all right. <laughs> I've got this issue in my brain now because you've renamed us Jim for the Honest Diver. I haven't renamed Jim. That's what you call yourself? No, I've always called myself James. It's everyone who knows us from back in the day, it's James. Right. Nobody calls us Jim. Right. So my mum always finds it's hilarious how now all of a sudden I'm Jim. <laughs> what do you want to be called? I can change the website, you know. No, I'm quite happy with Jim because oh. most customers just end up calling us Jim in anyway, yeah. even though I say my name's James. And they're like, oh, yeah, Jim. <laughs> it's, it's, it breaks my brain, this debate in my brain. <laughs> but yeah, in terms of honest diver, it's Jim. Okay. Is that, that's it? <laughs> I've not even forgot what we're talking about. <laughs> you can introduce yourself. <laughs> Well, that's it, isn't it? Name your age, your star sign. Right, okay, yeah, don't know any of that. I think we might struggle with this podcast. <laughs> if you're st- like, having difficulty remembering your name and your age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't, I don't know what you want us to do. I want you to just introduce yourself. You've got, you've got J- Jim, James. Yes, I know. That's sorted. Right. Do you want to say a little bit about yourself? Why don't you go? Okay. My name's Nick, because nobody calls us Nicola, except me mum. And then I know that I'm in trouble. So it's just Nick, please. Yeah. <laughs> I've got that. That's quite sorted in my head. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Good for you. Right. Well, I'm obviously a diver. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been diving for 15 years. Yeah, getting old now. Getting old. Uh, I'm a paddy course director. <laughs> I'm a Libra. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm asking. Like, we're doing all name of rank and file. No, no, and... no. But we have to give some context that we're not just talking bollocks. We actually know what we're talking about. Right, okay. I see. Anything else? Uh, um, well, I'm one half of the Honest Diver. Co-founder. Yes, you Co-founder, yeah. You're the other half, I think. <laughs> well, I do debate that <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been diving for? 20? No. No, because you haven't been diving longer than me. 2008. I think that was 2002. I think. I don't even know if that's 15 years. I can't do the math. Yeah. I definitely did my dive master in 2010-ish. Yeah. Well, that's how we met. It is, yeah. All right. So I had just come back from the Bahamas where I did like a little mini internship thing because I was a teacher back then mm-hmm. and uh, on my six week holiday I went to the Bahamas to do like a fish s- survey study thing and then do my dive master at the same time so when I came back home I was like well I've got this sort of professional qualification I should probably do something with it and then I ended up at like a paddy forum um, where I was like handing out cards said we'll work for air <laughs> to try and get some experience because at that point I'd never dived in the UK so I, f- yeah. I felt like a total fraud so I was just like please somebody take pity on me and just give us a chance and then I met Nick and Rob um, and then I ended up meeting you because I was the dive master and then you came along <laughs> and wanted to be a dive master as well and I'm like what the hell yeah back when I was a little rescue diver and you literally looked like a 12 year old looked like a 12 year old absolute noob no idea what I was doing <laughs> yeah didn't take it seriously well, no, I was still unconvinced about doing it. I just wanted to, to do some diving. Yeah. And I couldn't afford to go abroad yeah. anymore. So it was time to see what the UK diving was all about. And then it all just went from there. I did my instructor. And then... Um, then you buggered off the <laughs> I went to Malaysia. You did. Uh, you went to Malaysia, left us high and dry. Yeah. And then after a few weeks, I was like, really good. No, you need to come out here. You need to come with us. Mm-hmm. So then uh, kind of rushed through my instructor, <laughs> bummed the plane ticket off you. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm enjoying you. Yeah. And then that's when, I think that's when our careers kind of took off properly because that was like full time, full time diving running dive shops and... Don't know, I think the first year it was mainly sleeping in a hammock. <laughs> oh, that's because we went to the dive centre that had no customers. We were yes. like, oh, sitting on the step of the dive centre going, please, please come and dive with us. Yeah, hi. It was good for cutting my teeth because we learnt a lot in that. We had to be very resourceful in that dive centre. <laughs> is, that, is that a polite way of putting it? Well, that's a good way for your CV, yeah. <laughs> Buttering regs and stuff like that just to get the dive in, yeah. That was definitely an eye opening part of the industry. Yeah. So that was like a really laid back, like, dive centre. Mm -hmm. I don't want to badmouth it because I love working there. Yeah. But it was um, not the standard that we would be working to now. No, God, no. Yeah, that was like, that was like we had no idea. Entry level, like, yeah. okay, we can make this work. Oh, actually, no, we need to go somewhere else. Yeah, I think HSC would have a seizure for the walk. Well, HSC doesn't even matter over there. It's not even a thing. Yeah. Um, so then, obviously, on the island where we were, because we are in Tiamen, there was, like, a few dive centres along the strip. Mm -hmm. um, so we got talking to people from the other dive centres and eventually we ended up at B&J down the road. Um, and then we were there for, like, three years. Ended up managing it. Yeah, I think it was four years. Four, just, four years. Just shy of. Um, and that's where we really learned like, about the industry and about how dive centres work and about how to teach and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a fantastic experience. Yeah. yeah, and then we finally decided, no, it's time to come home, spend time with family. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, it was one Christmas because we used to always come home at Christmas because it was like off-season. This is going to be a problem of <laughs> filming. Oh. Who was that? Postman. Postman. So what we're saying, we came, we used to come home for Christmas. Yep. Because it was like off season, so there was nothing going on, on the island, so we used to come home and then we ended up going for like a Sunday dinner with Nick and Rob, who we used to work for. Um, and they were like, do you want to buy a dive centre? And we got back in the car and we're like, no, what? No, what? No. And then we're like, actually, could, could that be possible? Yeah. <laughs> It's mental thing about that feels like Isn't it? twenty years yeah, ago. Yeah, it feels forever ago. Yeah, and then we kind of talked it over with our parents, and they were like, "We totally think you should come back. We're going to help you to come back because they were missing where we were missing them, and you know, everything was we were missing all the family stuff going on." Yeah, and the exchange rate was killing me. Yeah, <laughs> we'd, we'd work the whole season, work our asses off the whole season, and spend it all on the ticket back. Yeah, not quite. But when we come home, everything was divided by five. <laughs> yeah. And then we went back, well, we went back to Malaysia and then we were like, actually, I think this is what we want to do. We want to, we've learnt so much from like managing a dive centre, running a dive centre out there that mm -hmm. we can do, do it for ourselves back home. Yep. So we came back to Sunny Blythe. When was that? 2016. 16. And then we started building pretty much 2017. Uh -huh. And then it opened in June. Well, that, but that wasn't even the Honest Diver. The Honest Diver didn't exist back then. Yeah. That was the fifth point. Yep. So we have a, like a school, a training facility that is the fifth point. Yeah, that's been six, going on seven years now. Mm. And I can't remember when we started on this diver three years ago. 2020? Yeah, so three, three yeah. years ago. So that's how we got here. Right. After, <laughs> so after all, all that years of build up, yeah. we sort of set up on our own. And so the Honest Diver, well, well like, do you want to explain what the Honest Diver is and what it's about and what we do? Uh, well, yeah. Just by way of introduction. Yeah, so I, like the whole time I've been in Malaysia, I was more the gear guy, wasn't I? Yes. I was servicing. Yeah, um, I wasn't even allowed to touch tools. Yeah, Malaysian didn't really like you. A woman touching tools, did they? No. Um, yeah, so I kind of broke my back servicing hundreds of bits of school kit <laughs> per season. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that kind of fell into my bracket. Yeah. What I love doing. And now I describe you as like a walk-in, talking, maintenance manual in yeah, a catalogue. Gear nerd. Yeah. yeah. Proper gear. I don't even know where that's come from, but I, yeah. I really like, I don't know, just getting kit and playing with it, testing it. And I feel like you sit at night though and like read about, <laughs> like I'd rather shoot myself in the face and just watch cat videos than. Well, yeah, but if someone brings out a new product and you just want to know all about it, don't you? No. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, is it covered in nice colour? That's all I'm interested in. Does it fit my colour scheme? Yeah. Yeah. 
so yeah, that's kind of where I come from. So when we've been doing all the training stuff we've been doing with school, we've always kind of provided that service to our divers, hasn't it? Where we've given proper honest advice, yeah. told them which kit does not work, doesn't work. Because yeah. I mean, all the kit on the market does work and does achieve its function, otherwise it wouldn't be allowed to be sold. Yeah. But there is kit that can achieve that goal a lot better than other kit. And it, well, it depends on the person as well, doesn't it? Because one piece of kit might work brilliantly for somebody, their style of diving, their shape or whatever, and whereas it wouldn't work the same for somebody else. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of one of the biggest things, isn't it? And it's the longest running thing in the industry. Everything's designed for me, six foot two bloke. <laughs> yeah, um, off, off the peg. Yeah, like, off the peg, there you go. Standard man. That's kind of what kit has been, but it has improved a lot over the years. Yeah. So kit has modernized, there's lots of new features. Unfortunately, there's still a lot of the kit that we used to have back in the day is still available, yeah. which in my opinion, a lot of it just needs to go, but manufacturers still like redesigning it and pushing yeah. it back out. Yeah. But yeah, so now there is a lot of better kit available. Yeah. I mean, just look at the back plates, you can now buy back plates in short and standard fits. Yeah. So there is a lot more catering to shorter people than women. <laughs> you just, <laughs> when you're rambling, you don't even, you, you go like, I'm not, I'm not talking about gear, and straight to your favourite topic of discussion. Yeah, that did happen, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> you're supposed to be saying what the is. <laughs> this is the problem that we're going to have. I'm going to have to like rein you in, talking about, like, talking about gear. What the main thing that the honest diver does is, I remember being in many situations in dive centres where I've said, I need this thing, and they've looked at their shelf and gone, oh, that's been up there for ages. Yeah, this would be perfect for you just because they literally just want rid of it because it's been there for ages. Oh, I'll give you a really good price on it. And then you take it home and it's just, it doesn't work. Yeah. It isn't what you need. That totally happened when I went out and learned how to dive because I did mine as part of like a overseas experience. So didn't know anything about diving. And I was going on holiday to do my open water in advance and rescue. Yeah. And they walked in the dive centre and they just sold me all. <laughs> they were like, ching, 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 ching. Yeah. Here's this boy. We could just... This was the shopping list that I had to bring. Yeah. And then it's just, yeah, there's some shocking photos of me when I first learned that. I <laughs> definitely weren't wearing split fins. <laughs> Everybody's been had a split fin face, yeah. don't worry about that. Aye. And the world's biggest volume mask. Yeah. Because I can remember I used to always struggle with mask clearing. And when I came back home and we started playing around the pool, that was one of the things you got, and you were like, oh yeah, I can't do mass clear. Uh, I don't remember this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know that I've never, didn't particularly like mass clear. No, it? and you were always like, so we did like a full session in the pool, and then... Did then, you? Yeah, yeah. Did we? Yeah. I've got terrible memory. <laughs> then you were like, basically, give us that mask, here's my mask, and then I did it like first go, and I was like, oh yeah, it might be the fact that it holds like five litres of water. <laughs> You were struggling to clear your mask. Yeah, I was no, I was. <laughs> I was gonna, well, because I have always had like issues when I was learning to dive. I hated it. Yeah. I absolutely hated it. And then there was that one time, if you remember, when I had an IDC and I'd been dry for a little bit. And I was like, right, I'm going to get in. I'm going to show you how to do um, <laughs> like a skill. And I picked, <laughs> I picked mask remove and replace to, like, to show how to like, demonstrate a skill. And I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't clear my mask. <laughs> I looked up and choked on the water and I was like trying to style it out. Then I, then it, I don't know what happened that day, but I couldn't clear my mask. I got there eventually. Then I was all like stuffy. So I was like, okay, I'll do a different skill now. Because <laughs> I can't do that again. <laughs> Being an instructor, like, I think nine times. Nine times? Out of ten? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know what you're rating this. Out of twenty? I'm ninety percent. Ninety percent of the time is still, supposed to style in that. That's out. still nine out of ten. All right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> look, look at me doing percentage. <laughs> What the fuck are we talking about? Mask clearing? Yeah, why? I don't know. <laughs> Is this the longest intro ever? I think so. Should we move on? Um, yeah, I still have done my introduction. <laughs> so every week, oh no, every, every week, every fortnight, whenever we do this podcast, and whatever frequency that might be, there's always going to be a section that's like bubble trouble. So things that you've seen or heard or read or that have happened to you that have really irritated you in some way. Right, okay. So what's, what's like, what's irritated you this week? This week? Well, yeah. Right. This, this time. Uh, I think probably the most recurring one is whenever people get in touch about wings. Uh -huh. So wings have got this whole stigma that... Oh, they're terrible, they're going to 
hold you upside down and push your face in the water and blah blah blah. Um, and this shouldn't be used for recreational diving. Okay. So that's probably the biggest what's obstacle I hear when people are thinking about making that change from this traditional old jacket BCDs in the wings. Um, quite frankly, I think it's a load of bollocks. <laughs> of course it is. I've never been in a wing that like pushed us forward at the surface. Yeah. So the wings, because they are back inflations, it's that donut on the back. So technically, yes, if you were to go probably limp and relax completely and we're lying on the water, it might flip you onto your front. Right. And it, if you were upright and just went and relaxed, it will push you forwards. So the whole thing with the Jagger BCDs is if you were kind of relaxed or whatever, it would kind of, as you inflated, it would bring you back on your back and get your head out of the water. For a ja jacket style? For the jacket style, right. yeah. But I mean, realistically, that's irrelevant these days. Yeah, but even when you're just chilling at the surface, you just put, like, your legs, you just... Exactly. ...get the position where it's comfortable to, to sit however you want to yeah. sit in the water. And I think the wings are more comfortable on the surface. Yeah. Because as soon as you put your legs in front of you and just lean back, it's almost like you're sitting in an armchair. Yeah. Whereas I remember the Jagger BCD I used to have. It, it was used to, up the, yeah, up the, the ears like that. <laughs> the most students we used to teach overseas and the BCDs above the head yeah. and riding in the armpits. Yeah. It's just so uncomfortable. Because yeah. all they do is come in small, medium, large and yeah. very little adjustment. Whereas a wing, you can fit it exactly that person and it's fitted to that person. And it's a perfect fit yeah. every time. We teach in wings. I've not worn a jacket style BCD since we came, came back home, really. No. I got rid of mine because I, I, my, my jacket style was what I originally had for UK diving. Mm -hmm. Took it to Malaysia and it was massive and it was up around my ears. Yeah. And then when I came back, I was like, okay, we'll change. And then even like like a bubble maker, like an eight-year-old would go in a, a wing now, wouldn't they? Yeah, when yeah. This, like, Especially I, now, there's so many flexibilities and options. So yeah. you could choose the size of the wing, the lift capacity, the back plates. Yeah. And then there's even different harness materials and all sorts and you can customise it. Basically, you can do whatever you want. So if somebody was out there thinking, I want to I wanna make the change, like what what um, advice would you give them? What's it, what would you suggest? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do it. But it's a big investment if you're not sure. No, it is, yeah. Um, so if they can, go out and test one, mm. try one. Um, so if people are like locals, we can't do that. Yeah, we can um, put them in the tank. Yeah. There is more and more dive centres now go and wing and back plates so that are well it makes sense for the dive center as well because yeah. you don't have to have like a million small medium and larges you just have a couple of wings and you can yeah. like fit custom fit them now when i go to a dive site wings are very common yeah so yeah if you get the opportunity test one and see what you think it's probably the best way of going about it um yeah but basically i think yeah wing and back plates are the future and i think everyone just needs to go that way mm purely just for how modular they are. Mm. And now they come in so many different pretty colours as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get like embroidery on them, you can get your name put on them or whatever. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, I think the house the entire dive took things a bit to the extreme, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> each to their own. Well, yeah, some people like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's very bright. I do like a bit of colour in my life, but I can't get away with black. You just want to be a ninja? Uh, no, I just, yeah. <laughs> You have a colour and then a few months later, you, oh, I want to change my colour. Uh, yeah, like what I do, figure that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. So what's your bubble troubles then? Well, I'm getting a bit sick of hearing people say stuff like, if you can't carry your own gear, then you can't be a diver. Right, okay. Getting a bit sick of hearing that because I can't carry my own gear sometimes. <laughs> 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 because it's really heavy. Yes. Yeah. Like sometimes when I get out of a dive, it's been a tough dive, like, and I'm thinking like eye mouth is a perfect example of this, like where, especially if you're coming out of green ends when it's like a steep hill up mm -hmm. and then the waves are crashing, it's, it's really hard because you're not going to have to dive anyway. Mm -hmm. So this just winds us up. Maybe is it like, it, tr it triggers us and, and I'm getting wound up by it because I think it's very exclusive and I don't think there's any reason why you shouldn't ask for help. Yeah, totally. Um... Especially with like the buddy system we use now. Yeah. Like you men always die with somebody, there should be always somebody to help you. Yeah. Um, it's like this whole like macho especially in the UK, like this macho like mm -hmm. I do feel like it's kinda petering out a bit now. 
and things are becoming more inclusive and yeah um yeah there's still like your buddy's got to be like okay with that yeah um because you are relying on each other like if everything's fine in the water then i suppose there's no issue with it it's just a case of like people have got shoulder issues and mm. stuff like that it is a bit hard carrying it down mm. um so there's ways around it but people always feel like embarrassed to ask for help mm -hmm. i don't care i'm just <laughs> <laughs> well, <I know. laughs> carry this for clean this back my eyelids and then ask for help so what is your product of the week this week, Jimmy? Jimmy? James. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's start of the season. Uh -huh. Water temperature's probably not that warm right yeah. now. We're diving next week, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. can't wait. That's going to be cold though. Yeah, so for me, it's all about layering. And mm -hmm. I think the most important layer and the one I wouldn't dive without is the fourth element, x core vest. Yes. I also agree. Do you know? Yeah, I don't. This doesn't leave my body when I'm diving. So. Is that, is that mine or yours? This is mine. Yeah, it's mine. I think it's yours. I don't know why, because it hasn't been used. It's just, you've worn it that much, it's just like impregnated. So that mean I can get a new one? No. Yeah. Alright, okay. So yeah, the X-Core vest. I mean, I love it just because it's so soft and fluffy. Yeah, it is nice and fluffy. Hang on. Soft and fluffy. <laughs> Soft and fluffy, Soft yeah. And fluffy, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it is a vest. But I know it was a uh, hell of... It's a vest. <laughs> see, see this? A vest. Right. <laughs> when it first came out and there was all that hype about it, like, oh, you don't need a heated vest anymore. Well, that's, that's why we found out about these, because I was thinking about getting a heated vest. Yeah. And we were, like, chatting to the fourth element people, and we were like, well, before you spend all that money, why don't you give one of these a go and we were both a bit sort of skeptical you know? yeah but if i have a dive and i don't put that on i notice my core temperature drop yeah. a hell of a lot more than if i'm wearing it yeah. so yes it's i think it's definitely up the height up the height up, up the hype up to the height up to the height yep. yeah yeah um and i think it is a game changer the fact that you can wear that and not really need a heated vest yeah. per se there's a caveat that if you're doing like i think anything extended range so if you're doing tech stuff or yeah. doing dives longer than an hour depending yeah. on the water temperature then okay yeah we need to get batteries involved um but for most recreational diving certainly most recreational dives in the uk are what 30 minutes yeah 40 minutes yeah maybe an hour in the summer and probably quite active compared to like a tech diver who's just hanging on a digo bar or something for yeah. hours yeah um i think that solves most people's problem um so the way it works is the materials it's got i've completely forgot what the materials are uh they're smooth and fluffy the smooth and fluffy <laughs> <laughs> but basically it absorbs your body heat and reflects it back to you in a nutshell so it kind of traps that heat coming off your body pumps it back in and just helps maintain that core strength Core strength. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> core strength. Where you're still in the gym. <laughs> Maintains your body's core heat yeah. for longer. Yeah. Um, and also, I particularly like this little panel here. Um, so, this is like a waterproof wicking fabric. So, basically, two reasons. Yeah, if you do get a bit of dribble down your neck seal, mm. you don't feel it as much, it kind of wicks it away. Mm -hmm. But also, this is where your inflator is on the dry suit. Yeah. And that air is cooled. So it just stops that cool there hitting your body and losing heat from there. So um, when you're, that, so say we're going out next weekend, right? What do you reckon the water temperature's going to be like? Six? Am I being a bit generous there? <sighs> I hope not. So say six, six-ish? Eight. Eight? That, okay. I'm, I'm going, going optimistic. optimistic. Right, okay. optimistic so, eight. Eight. so what's going to be eight degrees, you're going to have your uh, dry suit on and you're going to be wearing this. What else? What else are you going to have? So I'll have my next to skin layer to take away like all the sweat and stuff. Like a bit, like a base layer. Yeah, so base layer, so merino wool, zero therms, or the J2s. It's my new favourite. And then this, and then so I'll, this goes on top of the base layer. Yep, on top of the skin layer. It's close. It's close to, yeah. Yeah, and then on top of that, you drop in your thicker layer, mm. whatever that may be. Mine's the new halo. <laughs> in this temperature, it's definitely going to be the halo. <laughs> and I love it. Yeah, I love mine as well. Yeah, it's just, yeah. I could quite happily sleep in that. Yeah. And then there's been some dives in the summer when the water's like, I don't know, 14, 
like I've literally just got my base layer in this one. Yeah, in the summer months, definitely. So it's like having something like this in your wardrobe is like, I think it's quite good because you can just combo it to, to match the temperature. I've always got it on. I don't think I've ever dived without it, mm -hmm. but I can change what's under it, what's on top of it to match the temperature. So it's a really like versatile bit of kit, I think. Yeah, I don't think I've done any dive without it. No. My mum took one to Iceland, like, to go walking. Oh yeah, I forgot they did that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you can use it for hiking as well. <laughs> yeah. And it comes, um, you can get leggings? No, oh. not anymore. Oh, oh well, no. I bet look after mine then. Yeah, you better. Yeah, you don't do the leggings okay. anymore. So it's just the best. And then in terms of buoyancy, mm. I didn't notice it made a ch change, but Apparently it's one to two kilo extra weight. I think it's a bit floaty. Yeah, a bit floaty. and I've noticed that now we've started using it in the school for students that yeah, they right. definitely need extra weight. And it just depends on the person. Yeah. It's one of them weird things. Yeah. I think it just depends where people are sitting on the buoyancy. If they're like close to the edge, that added two kilo. But if actually they're already a little bit overweight, they need like an extra kilo. Hmm. So it's just one of them things. Test it. Get yes. in and weight check it. Yeah, but. I mean, for the price, compared to the price of a battery and a heated vest, yeah. it's a hell of a difference. How much is it? I can't even remember off the top of my head. 140 quid. Right. And a heated vest would be like what? Well, a battery alone, you're looking about 600. 600? For yeah. a battery? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was expensive. Yeah. I mean, there is other solutions on the market um, where the batteries are incorporated is into the thing. Is that why you forced me to get one of <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Okay, did that very yeah. subtly, well done. Yeah. So divers send us in their questions that they want honest answers to. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, we were asking people to say yes. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we had a mint question off Laura. She said, what the fish is a lumen <laughs> and how many do I need? Yeah, how do I not go too technical on this? <laughs> What, explain it to me because I don't know what a lumen is. So. so, lumen is basically a measure of light as opposed to a light bulb, how many candles it would be. Oh, so it's not nothing to do with candles anymore. It's no. a different yeah. unit. So, we use lumens to measure it. Um, but this is basically a unit measurement given off from the light. So, is there a machine that measures it or something? Yeah, you can kind of use machines to measure it. Um, Unfortunately for all manufacturers give out the lumens, but there's no standardization. <laughs> there is new tests and new standards, but they're not all conformant to that yet. So one manufacturer might have a 600 lumen and another might have a 600 lumen, but they're not actually the same lumen. Correct, yeah. So it, it is a bit of a minefield. Okay. So basically it depends how they've measured it. So you might see some manufacturers giving off um, information like a true lumen. <laughs> as opposed to a fake lumen. As opposed to a fake lumen. So basically when they measure the lumens, that's based on the LED in a normal laboratory conditions with proper power without any of the torch. Or just the bulb bit? Just the bulb bit, yeah. I just have this vision of like little pixies coming out and they're like counting the pixies or something. <laughs> that's what a lumen sounds like to me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much I may as well be. So in the lab it's just the bulb bit and then it'll change once it's in the actual torch. Yeah, so once it's in the actual torch, you've got the glass that goes on the front, and then you've also got like the metal shiny bit around it, the reflector. Um, oh, thanks for clarifying. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I said go dumb, but maybe it's not that dumb. So yeah, the, qual <laughs> the quality of the materials right. will influence how good that light is going out. And also it depends on the beam angle as well. Right. And you could take that measurement from right in front of the torch or a metre away, five metres away and ten metres away. So it'll change over distance as well. So how are you supposed to know? It's very difficult to compare one brand to another brand. Right. The only way to know is to get them side by side and compare them. <laughs> Stand in front of it and see which one hurts more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good. I mean, that's one of the tests I do want to do. Get, like, not standing up with the torch. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but get loads of manufacturers different torches and put them side by side in a more like laboratory esque test. Right. Are you gonna wear a white coat? I've got a blue coat. <laughs> Dom that. Right. Uh, 
<laughs> but like do some proper side by side tests and maybe some do some side by side tests underwater. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of promotional and stuff of each individual manufacturers, but never in the same exact conditions. Can you wear your blue coat underwater as well, please? No, because I'll ruin it. Oh. It's my service in court. Continuity. Continuity. You need to make sure that all yeah. variables are the same in a laboratory experiment. Right, okay. So, and anyway, so manufacturers are given what's called a true lumen reading. So that is the readings they've took with it actually in the torch. Oh, right, okay. But again, this will change. So if you're using a modular system like Ammonite, which lots of different batteries, the power Aye. put on the LED. So modular ones, like where the battery's on your side and yeah, then it's got sorry. a cable in it. Yeah. Um, and even some will use like double A batteries, which you can change with a better quality lithium battery. So you can use both on the same torch. Right. Then two different batteries will give different outputs. Ooh. So how do you know which one you need? Yeah. I would say your general ballpark. So a lot of the small, tiny, cheap torches, backup torches, so the Shark Polaris is a good example of one. It is absolutely tiny. Uh, it's mini school. That is given off about four, got one? 400 lumens um, buried away somewhere. And we want to open up all the boxes. And, okay. Yeah. So they're about 400 lumens, which I think is about what you need for a backup. So it's small and handy, gets you out of dodge, shove it in a pocket, um, have it clipped on your BCD or whatever. Just something stuck out of the way. You probably never use it, but it's there. Right. And they're also good, like if you need to try and find something in your kit bag or something <laughs> like that. This is what the manufacturers say. Nobody is using a torch to find stuff in their kit bag. I do if I'm night diving. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, who is the manufacturer that says that the inside of their bag is really bright so you can see things easier? Uh, four filament. <laughs> Like the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It's like we're really struggling for features. What can we say about this product? <laughs> I think it's totally handy. Who, who uses a torch to look inside that? How deep is your kit bag? <laughs> if it's black and it's black kit and it's night. Well, maybe, but even so. There's lots of different types of divers. Okay. Diving in different environments. Well, I, didn't, I didn't mean to, to judge. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. anyway. Sorry. So a 400 lumen, you can use that like, to look in your bag. <laughs> a 400 lumen torch is a handy backup. Yeah. What, the dog's barking at? <laughs> so what were we saying? 400 lumen is like a backup type torch. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could have anything for your backup, but oh, yeah. a ballpark, yeah, anything like 400 lumens or something like around that it's is... Like a, a cheapy, like... Not, yeah. Not I the, mean... The Polaris is like 45 quid. Oh, right, okay. Right, so it's quid. like a, just a, a cheap one you can have in your pocket. It comes in handy if you mm. need to. Hopefully you never need to use it. Um, when you get lost in your dive bag. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Then most of them, I would say, have got a torch in the 1,000 lumen range. So anything around 1,000 lumens, whatever they talk about. Um, that is kind of, I would say, your mainstay torch for a recreational diver. Right. So that is good for just general everyday diving, looking in holes, looking underneath rocks, that type of thing. Um, that can be effective at signaling in your body. Mm. And personally, I prefer that for a night dive. Why? Because anything less isn't enough. Uh -huh. And then obviously, you could go more crazy, so I've got my Shark Artman's torch, which is like 6,000 lumens, <laughs> yeah. which everyone whinges because it blinds them. Yes, especially um, when you're doing recording, trying to record you. Yes. Um, so that type of brightness is amazing for illuminating wrecks, oh. for low bays and communicating over distance, that type of thing, um, and just generally brightening up. But on a night dive, you might as well just be doing a day dive. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> right. I think it spoils it, because... I like just having that rummage around on the night dive where you can only see a small area. Mm. Um, also, I find the brighter torch you get above that, I think, scares away most of the life. Yeah. So they see you before you see yeah. them. So and they're also like that. Ah, yeah. when you so see. I quite like just a general thousand lumen torch. Yeah. Like my personal ones, that I'm a night stingray. Um, the Shark Vega is a good one. That's an example of manufacturers doing the true lumens because that's 1200 lumens and then the actual recording for true lumens, it was like 900. What? So the, 
it says 1200 on the box but actually yeah. it's only 900 but the manufacturers have said oh yeah on our tests in the torch it's oh so whoever built the bulb the led yeah. says it's 1200 yeah but actually once it's in the case and it's only 900 pretty much yeah okay kind of um, does it really make is that 300 is that like a massive difference i suppose it is that's like yeah. being able to see the dive bag and not being able to so see like, the dive bag, isn't it? um a 40 watt bulb i think is meant to be like 500 lumens or something like that right a six, 60 watt bulbs, 800 lumens. Right. That helps comparison. But even then, if you look at bulbs, you can have warm white and cool white. Yeah, yeah. Same lumens, yeah. but two different colours. Yeah. So I think that's, again, you've got to get out and use the torches and see them side by side. So, it's not uh, easy. It's not no. for a torch. That's not easy. No. Not everybody's like you, like little magpie with torches, and every time you see a torch, yeah. you buy one. Especially when you get the umbilicals, the price involved with the batteries and the head. Yeah, we're talking like thousands, aren't yeah. we? Yes, there's lumens. Yes, there is lots of manufacturers giving it off. Generally, you'll find very cheap ones at 500 lumens. The average ones are about 1,000 lumens, right. give or take. And then after that, you're going up to your 3,000, 4,000 right. type of lumens. So back up 400, general 1,000, specialised in the 3,000 e plus. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. People who want a torch, a serious bit of kit that is going to work for hours. This type of thing and then that's the other thing we'll look at like the battery yeah how long does the battery last what's the burn time on high power low power yeah. um loads of torches doing cool features where they give you like a low battery warning and stuff like that um so it does vary for me i want a half decent torch that is going to last for at least two hours yeah because that is technically two dives which is most diving days and then at least you can recharge them. yeah so what for the next day what's your favorite torch out of your vast collection so i do like the ammonite torches mm. they're quite nice um but i've got to say i've been extremely impressed with the shark torches ah, but that's like a expensive umbilical one no because they've got the polaris and the vega oh you like the little ones as well yeah the little right. ones are decent um yes there is more expensive better quality ones um but for the price you're getting them the power you're getting i think the crack little torches um even the artemis yes it's a big huge umbilical but for its price the power you're getting it's on par with some of the like top end torches like the halcyon focus and stuff like that yeah. but i mean when people are looking at them type of torches they need to decide like what beam angle they want what they're going to be using it are the cave divers or the wreck divers right so it's a bit at, more at the photographers it's a lot more specialized the, yeah 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 it's a whole different world. but we can save that for another podcast yeah because i'm getting bored now okay <laughs> right <laughs> Next question comes from David. Are X Deep Clips worth the extra money? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to elaborate on that? Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's one of them stupid things. Like, you'll talk to some guys and a clip's a clip. Yeah. Yes, I agree with that. A clip is a clip. And there's nothing wrong with the standard clips you get on the market. Yeah. But for a couple of quid more, I just... Is that all the difference is a couple of quid? Yeah. I mean, suppose if you need lots, that might make a difference. But Yeah. I think like a, a bold snap is about nine pound, and the next deep one's twelve pound. Right. I mean, one it's got the X Deep logo on. <laughs> if you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> if you're into that kind of thing, yeah. Um, but basically, it's just more ergonomic. I agree with that. It's it's got a sexy slide. Yeah. It does. Um, so so that is. Oh kind of, wait. Oh, here we go. So this is your general clip. Maybe we'll just... It's like that's like a. I think they're like dog lead ones. Like you get them on a dog lead. Yes, I mean you will we'll find these on Amazon and eBay, various different qualities. There's a reason why the dive shops are selling the more expensive one. It is a better quality that will last the salt water conditions. Is it stainless? Yeah, it's like marine grade stainless. Right. So you kind of get what you pay for. Um, then it works. It's nice. Does the job. Uh -huh. But then we'll bring the next deep one. Yes. We've got the fancy logo. <laughs> fancy logo. It's not going to show up the camera, but you know. Um, but I just find it's just got that nice little finger groove. Well, put put them side by side without your finger in the way so people can see the difference. I don't know what you want. <laughs> well, that one's rounded and that one's square. Yeah. So you can tell that that side definitely had some design thought go behind it because yeah. for it being square, it means that your finger stays in place, it doesn't slip off. So it's just, yeah. it's just dead easy to use, especially yeah. if you've got thick gloves on yeah it's just yeah just nice and it, that slide do that slide again oh yeah i mean it's the simple things um yeah there's nothing wrong with a normal clip but uh 
I really like the XD clips. I do like the XD clips. I mean, some tech divers kind of say it's cheating a bit because you're relying on that clip. And if you can't get that clip, and then you can only get a general clip, <laughs> but you're still going to be able to do your clip. Am I really, really going to go, like, what? It's not cheating. It's just you're, you're deciding on the kit that you like best. Yeah. Oh, so they're saying if you like rent a stage or whatever, it's got the wrong, a different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I suppose. Well, I suppose. This is. I mean, you see, I'm nerdy. This, yeah. I'll not say his name, but he's yeah, even bigger than nerd. Whisper. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the mics are good. So, you would go for X Deep over normal? Yeah, generally, most of the clips I'm using. Um, the other thing I quite like about the XD clips is I use certain on the, yeah, this, <laughs> you're gonna take the thing I was here. So on the, when I'm clipping off, so I've got two different types of clips. So one's an XD clip, one's a standard clip. Right. So then I tactically know, tactically like tactile feel, just by feeling the clip, oh, that's that clip for my torch, that's that clip for something else. Okay. <laughs> It's, I mean, that's sens it's sensible. It totally it is, is, yeah. yeah. So that's another perk. Okay, yeah, okay. I'll do that. So, yes, I think they're worth the money. I've got them on my side of my cylinders, and like people, because it's a thinner metal on one of them, they say it'll break. I've, I've destroyed them. What? You broke them? No. Yeah. Like so I've, you just said you just right, said okay. people say they're going to break. I've destroyed them. <laughs> yeah. I've absolutely hammered mine. And it's um, been fine. It's and it's been to. absolutely fine. It's not actually lost shape. I think I've managed to slightly bend one, right. but it still works. Yeah. Well, that's kind of bringing me to the end of this episode, I suppose. The dive season is just around the corner. It is. Yes. Next weekend. Next weekend, regardless. As long as it's safe to get in. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> if it's 10 metre waves, I'm not getting in. Yeah. But as long as it's flattish, yeah. I'm jumping in, regardless of the viz. Yeah, I'm not bothered by the viz. I just want to jump in, get salty. Just putting all the kit on again. Yeah. Just going through the routine. Because, I mean, it's guaranteed the first time you go, there's a bit of kit that we've took out of the van and forgotten about. Yeah. And we'll it's it's like, because um, it's just going to be crew. Isn't it? Yeah. It's just us, like, sort of just messing about and getting back into the swing of things before we start taking. Yeah, just go to mess about because I've took everything out of the van this year and now I'm going to have to remember where the kit is. <laughs> Everything's upside down. Uh, yeah. So it's just starting to get organised and sorted. Yeah. We need Archie back. He can organise his way. Yes, get that routine going again. So, what are you most looking forward to about the new season? I'm really looking forward to getting the camera back in the water. Right. Because I've missed that. Because I just started getting into the swing of using my camera on the water. Yeah. And I started dabbling in macro and opening up a whole new world. We've had loads of little cool shrimps in the kelp and yeah. loads of little baby fish in the kelp. So I want to get back and looking for that. And I can't wait for lump suckers. Yeah. Provided I've already not missed them. Yeah. Lump suckers with the big juju lips. I don't know, it's been quite rough. Hasn't it? Like the, the sea's been quite angry, so they might not have made it up yet. Dear nah. I can't wait to see them again. Yeah. Just excited to get back in. Go through that whole season of, oh, we're going to see something cool this year. Because we've always had, like, there's been signs of orcas out to sea. <laughs> there's been basking sharks coming close. There was a sunfish at one of the dive sites. Yeah. This season is the season where we'll get to see <laughs> you reckon? something cool like that. Hopefully. What about you? Um, well, I just like, I just like blowing bubbles. <laughs> like, I don't really want anybody around us. Just, I want my own little space and just just to have some peace and quiet and maybe pick up some rubbish. That's, I mean, that's why I go diving, to pick up rubbish. Yeah. I've never seen someone go as zen and chilled out when picking up rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> you just completely, you know, you just turn off, don't you? Only when I'm allowed. Like, you know, if I've got a, ah, job, yeah. if I've got a job to do, then I don't turn yeah. off. But if I'm allowed to, then I do. Yeah. You're just quite happy in your own little world. Ooh, piece of rubbish. Ooh, piece of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the beaches are a right mess at the minute. Like the, Yeah, I did notice that when we looked. Especially down Maggie's Burn, that was disgusting. Really yeah, there's a lot there. of microplastic popping up. Yeah. A lot of uh, storm outfalls. I think. And the, the waves must have been huge because it was there was ru like rubbish up on the prom. Like the, mm. the tide, what do you call it? Like the strand lane or whatever, there yeah. was, that was on the prom. So it's obviously been really, really... I think we just had a big moon. A big moon. Big moon. Big moon, big tides. Yep. Well, yeah, I think that's the first podcast. 
kind of got some form of rambling structure. Oh, yeah. I have to figure out a way of keeping on track. <laughs> Mainly me. Maybe we need like a buzzer. Like when it's going too far off track, it's just like meh. Yeah, but the audience can't press that, can they? No, but I can. <laughs> oh, right, okay. <laughs> well, we, and you can for me as well. I see. Fair enough. Meh. <laughs> So what's he saying off? Mm. <laughs> to be like, Anger man. <laughs> you stay classy. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I love lamp. <laughs> uh, oh no, but we should we should say if anybody wants to send in questions. Yes, please do. Yep. Want more questions. More questions so we can talk about random stuff. Um, so you can send those to hello at honestdiver.com. That's our email address. You can yep. send them in there. So, yeah, there's no such thing as a stupid question. There isn't. We just want to hear from you. Um, and, yeah, our whole goal is to kind of be that person to explain things and, yeah, kind of delve a bit, a bit deeper than the manufacturer's bump. Bye now. Love you, bye.